Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Charleston, the ones that are from out of town. And a couple of things to note before we get started right there. It's Lynn's birthday today. Everybody <laughs> wish her a happy birthday. And secondly, Kat Doherty told me to wear long pants. Helen Hill told me to wear shorts. I picked the shorts. <laughs> well, good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome everybody to A.W. Shuck's Seafood Shack on King Street here. A special welcome to the Holy City, to the governor and his team. It's a privilege to have you here, Governor. You. We, we appreciate it. The pandemic surpasses any crisis our industry and nation has ever faced in modern times. Every part of the hospitality and travel industry and the broader economy has been seriously impacted by COVID-19. The overall estimated loss in Charleston for the first two months was $1 billion. During that same period, unemployment rose to 70%. Almost all food and beverage establishments downsized their workforce considerably. I personally closed four restaurants, furloughed 150 employees, including 12 right here at the A.W. Shuck Seafood Shack next door and this patio. Unfortunately, the number of restaurants have yet to reopen. Others remain limited to takeout and delivery only, some with additional outdoor seating thanks to our local, government's, um, local government laws. The harsh reality is that months of limited or suspended operations didn't work for most establishments. The unfortunate forecast for some restaurants that would close permanently as a result of the shutdown. Despite the staggering challenges over the last eight months, our industry has never lost its commitment to safety and health of our employees, our guests, and our community. This remains our highest priority. Our reputation depends on it. I'm proud of how our industry has adhered to operating under the restrictions as we continue with additional cleaning protocols, wearing of masks, compliance with the 11 p.m. closing uh, curfew of alcohol sales at bars and restaurants. Charleston's world-renowned culinary scene is our passion. You have the industry's continued commitment that we will do all we can to preserve it. The only way to do that is put safety first. As we navigate this challenging recovery, we support every measure, we support every measure and every measure is significant. Our industry has no chance of withstanding the crisis without the confidence of elected officials. These small business and minority grants will assist a lot of food and beverage establishments in the low country. This program marks another critically important step in our industry's commitment to the robust recovery. Thank you, Governor, for your commitment to the travel, tourism industry, and hospitality industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Henry McMaster. Thank you. Hey, Henry. Yeah, thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John Keener. It's great to uh, be in Charleston again. Uh, it's a beautiful city. I understand Condé Nast has rated us again, uh, number one in the U.S. For, two, for six, what is it, ten years in a row or something like that, Paul? Well, that's, a, that's for good reason. Charleston is a magnificent place and is known all over the world. Uh, just briefly, this is a, this is a great, uh, great step forward that our uh, legislature has taken. Uh, the, the virus hit us pretty hard. We in South Carolina took a little different course than they did in some other places. That is, instead of trying to figure out what's essential, non-essential, or some way in between, we, we took a different route and we looked at those activities, those types of uh, restaurants, uh, businesses, uh, massage parlors, barbershop, those sorts of places, concerts where people gathered together closely where we knew at the time that would be the most a prosperous place for the virus. And those are the places, and those are the only places upon which we put restrictions or closures. We regretted doing it, we had to do it. We didn't know what we were facing with the virus, and now we know more. And because of that measured, targeted approach going in, we've had a measured, targeted approach coming out. And the burden that we've placed on, had to place on our people, our businesses has been lighter. Uh, there's no other state that took as light and careful and determined approach as we did, and it is working. If you've been reading the newspapers, the Wall Street Journal in particular, they're noting South Carolina, the head of the CDC, uh, Robert Redfield, Dr. Redfield said South Carolina's approach, South Carolina's efforts are a model for the rest of the country. Wall Street Journal is saying it's the South that's doing the best because we were careful going in, we're careful going out, but we want to get out. We want people to understand that we know the virus, we know more about it now, we don't know all there is to know, but we know a lot more now and we know how to control it and we have to do that. But we cannot cripple our economy. 
there's a lot of parts of, of health, public health, part of it is your physical health, but you also have your mental health, your economic health, and there are ramifications for every action. There's an equal and sometimes more equal reaction that we didn't intend. But we're making progress in South Carolina, and I'm proud of, of what our people and our leaders are doing, including those here. So today what we're doing, I want to remind you that our legislature, that senators and representatives here, among others, did something very smart. Of the $1.9 billion that came from the CARES Act, they first set aside $500 million of that to go into the Unemployment Insurance Fund. That way, those taxes will not have to be raised on businesses in order to put that money, bring that fund back up to about $1.1 billion. And then in the second action, they put another $420 million. So we have, from the CARES Act, we've put $920 million back into that fund that will not have to be placed on the backs of the businesses. So that, we will eliminate that tax increase, we hope. We hope the economy will pick up. But the, the other thing is what we're doing here today. There are a lot of people that, for one reason or another, miss the applications or the opportunity to apply for a lot of the CARES Act funds and the different programs. So we're here today, and this, this is for those, particularly those who missed it, but you didn't have to miss it, but this, this gives everyone a, another chance and maybe the final chance to have some funds, these are grants and not loans, in order to give, get just enough to get your business moving again. And it comes in two parts. One is the minority and small business part. That's $40 million. And the other is for nonprofits. Uh, these are smaller businesses. And that's $25 million. And the deadline is, uh, uh, I think it's 11.59 uh, on uh, PM on November the 1st. And if you don't sign up, you don't get your application in, you, you miss it. So don't miss it. That's why we're here is to let everybody know. And we're going to another town uh, later this week. We're in Rock Hill yesterday. We'll, going to other places, sign up. This may be the last opportunity, but we want to be sure that those businesses that have been impacted have a chance to make it. And we are very confident about what we're going to do in South Carolina. And that's my story. And that's my message. And who, who am I calling on next? Brian Gaines, Department of Administration, who has the details. <laughs> Brian, thank you, sir. Thank you, Henry. Uh, thank you, Governor, and good morning, everyone. Um, as been mentioned, my name is Brian Gaines. I'm the director of the Executive Budget Office within the Department of Administration who will be administering uh, these two programs in which we are excited to announce here today. Uh, first being the Minority and Small Business Relief Grant Program. Um, it will award grants uh, to minority and small businesses to cover those qualifying expenditures for providing services or due to revenue loss relative to COVID-19. Uh, it, as the governor mentioned, it is up to $40 million has been allocated, and the grant awards will range between $2,500 and $25,000. Um, to be eligible, your organization must be opera operational from September 13th to the present. Uh, that is six months prior to the governor's first executive order that took place on March 13th. Uh, you must have 25 or fewer employees. Those are employees who are W-2 employees, not your contractors or any of your seasonal employees. Uh, you must be physically located in South Carolina. You must be uh, registered as a uh, official business in the state of South Carolina. And you must not have any delinquent property or any other uh, tax that were due prior to 2018 or any other year prior to that. Um, there is a priority list to, uh, for minority businesses. Those are businesses that are owned by United States citizens and individuals who are either socially or economically disadvantaged. Um, also, the applicants um, that did not receive any other CARES Act or any other COVID-19 related grants, those individuals could be uh, within that prioritization list. Uh, businesses with 15 or fewer employees are also included, and those businesses that can demonstrate the greatest financial need. Uh, these funds could be used for staffing costs for your employees while you remained open, um, your operating costs, your facility costs, uh, the cost of purchasing personal protective equipment, as well as any revenue loss that you can show due to any closures or partial closures as a result of COVID-19. Um, these uh, grants will be reviewed and decided upon by a panel. That panel is comprised of the Director of the Commission on Minority Affairs, uh, the Secretary of Commerce, and the Director of the Department of Revenue. 
Uh, the second program is the nonprofit relief grant program. Um, that will be awarding grants to nonprofits, again, for their um, direct qualifying expenditures or revenue loss that is attributable to COVID-19. Um, that grant award is up to $25 million, and the awards for individual organizations will range from $2,500 to $50,000. Uh, to be eligible, again, um, you had to be in operation since September 13, 2019 to present. Um, you must be designated by the IRS as a 501c3. You must also be registered with the Secretary of State's office as a public charity, and you must be physically located and providing services here in South Carolina. Uh, there is a priority list, one, to those nonprofit organizations that, again, did not receive any other CARES Act or COVID-19 related federal assistance, and those organizations that have expenditures for providing services such as food assistance, including preparing meals, uh, rent or mortgage assistance, utilities assistance, mental health counseling, health care services to include health care supplies, mental health and behavioral health, criminal domestic violence and children's advocacy services, as well as arts and cultural events and items. Again, these funds can be used to cover your staffing costs while you remained open, your operating costs, facility costs, the cost of PPE, and again, revenue loss. Again, there is also a panel for this grant award as well. Um, it is comprised of the Director of the Department of Social Services, the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Consumer Affairs, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services, the Secretary of State, the Arts Commission, the Department of Archives and History, and the State Housing Authority. Um, to apply, you can visit the accelerate.sc.gov website, and as the governor has mentioned, the deadline to apply is 1159 p.m. on November 1st. There will be no extensions to that deadline. Um, and as far as a timeline, the application window opened on October 19th. It closes on November 1. Between November 2 and December 3rd, those two panels will be reviewing those applications and making their recommendations. And then starting on December 8th, we will begin to notify those awardees of their, the outcome of their grant. Um, so with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Willie Yomas, who is the owner of Yomas Heating and Air here in Charleston, South Carolina. All right, Mr. Yomas. Good morning. I want to say thank you to the governor. And uh, I'm going to give you a little background about myself. I'm retired Navy. I was retired from the Navy in November 93. I started my business uh, that December in uh, 94, and I've been in it all the while. I've worked all over South Carolina um, over 25 years, and the uh, impact that I've seen with the COVID is it's sort of like a ripple effect. When people get laid off, they don't have any money to pay for your service, so then they scale back. And the other things that I've seen in order to bid jobs, we've had to um, scale back on our pricing so that we can be in competition with the other people due to the ripple effects of COVID. Um, it's, it's, it's a scary thing when you um, go out here and you're working all day and you come home and you don't have enough money to put food on the table. And uh, we worked on we worked on different jobs and we try to get them down as low as we can, but it's, uh, it's like an impossible job to do. And I haven't received any money from the PPP program, but I looked at this new grant program as soon as they sent it to me, and I opened it up and started filling it out, and uh, it seems like a pretty good deal, and I hope I'll be able to uh, <laughs> Get some of it. <laughs> so, um, due to that, uh, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Jordan Lash. Thank you very much. Um, as John had mentioned earlier, the necessary public health precautions taken to prevent the spread of COVID-19 have caused historic declines in travel spending around this area. Travel businesses and their workers were amongst the first and the hardest hit. According to the U.S. travel before the pandemic, 83% of travel employers are small businesses. More than half of all small travel businesses in the U.S. are at risk of either taking longer than six months or to recover or never recovering at all. 
what is normally our industry's strongest month for the occupancy in Charleston became its worst. Occupancy bottomed out in April at 18% compared to over 85% in the normal years. No overnight visitors, closures of non-essential businesses, and stay-at-home order meant tremendously reduced spending in Charleston's iconic King Street shopping district. This was evidenced by foot traffic slowing to a trickle. To a stark contrast to tens of thousands of daily visits in normal spring. Disappointingly, but understandably, the King Street Corridor lost some of its luster during the pandemic. Building occupancy along King from Broad to Spring Streets declined almost 7% between January and September of this year. The moment Charleston went into shelter in place and we had to close our doors, our loyal clients reached out to us and asked what they could do to help. Um, this truly humbled me. I'm so fortunate to have such a supportive clientele. I cannot thank them enough. We will survive, King Street will survive, and Charleston will survive. With a seven-year-old son, um, I learned about this word cohort lately. <laughs> um, it often comes up. So in other words, everybody can start small in cohorts but aim high as in Charleston or the state South Carolina, as some of us did on King Street called Mickey. This began with a group of 10 locally owned middle King Street shops that, to, that wants to deliver an unmatched level of service and a vibrant sense of community, wanting to make a positive move forward. Customer relationships keep the heart beating for all of our local businesses, and we want to extend our services beyond the in-store experience, offering a curated shopping, styling, and delivery service straight to you. Shopmiddleking.com is where this is. As mentioned throughout the crisis, the safety and well-being of our employees, visitors, and residents have been paramount. It has been reassuring to see the resolve of individuals across all sectors of the industry. The greater Charleston area, our business community, and the travel industry are all resilient. Be sure, to be sure, a robust recovery will require collaboration. Now more than ever, amongst all industry sectors, the healthcare community, and all of our elected officials. This morning is a wonderful example of the continued support of our state leaders. Thank you, Governor McMaster, to you and all of your team, for extending this program to minority and small businesses and nonprofits. I have every confidence in this type of support will help countless retailers like me along storied King Street and throughout the greater Charleston area. It is now my pleasure to introduce Helen Hill, CEO of Explore Charleston. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. So I have to tell you, when the governor walked in, the first thing I said is, do you know where we're supposed to be? This is the week that we were gonna have the big celebration at our newly renovated visitor center for our 350th anniversary for the state of South Carolina. Oh, how times have changed. Um, it is no secret to all of us that small business is the backbone of this country. And we've never felt it more than we have since March. And Governor, I have to thank you. From the very first day we had our first Accelerate South Carolina meeting, you and these wonderful elected leaders have put our business and our citizens first. And I'll have to tell you that the tourism industry, it's often been said there are countries in a recession. The tourism industry is clearly in a depression. But Governor, I am here to tell you that we are turning a corner. That great funding that you gave us for advertising and promotion, and legislators, I want you to know, these business owners are gonna swamp you afterwards to thank you for that funding, because we know that all good things start when someone chooses to spend the night in our community. And Elliot, isn't it great? We actually have visitors in our airport. There were a few sad days, weren't there, Paul, when we didn't have any visitors at all at our airport, and they're starting to come back. So we're really excited. We do believe we've turned a corner, and they're great grant programs like this that will make a difference for those folks who might not stay with us. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to our Senator Sandy Sin. Thank you, Helen. So much has already been said. I'll try not to belabor anything, but I will say that when the PPP loans came out, 
I thought that it was a great idea for the federal government to do such, but 500 employees to me is not a small business. And I really uh, am very excited that Governor McMaster and all of my fellow legislators here agreed that what we have to do is make sure that our mom and pops are cared for, lest what we will all be doing is shopping only in big box stores henceforth. So I am very, very thankful that this money is going to go to great use. Uh, people that maybe did qualify for the PPP loaned and still need more or those who just missed the boat the last time, like Mr. Yeoman's here. So in any event, I just want to, to thank people like Helen for keeping the tourism going, and um, let's just keep moving forward. Thank you, Governor McMaster. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Sandra. Well, that, that uh, concludes this portion. We'll meet with the press in a, in a little while. But y'all, thank you very much for coming, and I want to thank again the Accelerate SC. That was 30, 30 people from academia, medicine, business, and education that met for over a month, had uh, many, many meetings, and we had uh, legislative input as well as others from all agencies, and, and they came up with the plan that we've been following, both for going in and coming out, and it's working very well. And uh, the best is yet to come. We're on, we're on the way back. We've got to be smart, be careful, but uh, we're not going to let this get us down because this is South Carolina, and we want the children to all grow up to be proud of South Carolina because it's the best place in the whole world to live, work, and raise a family. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Y'all uh, enjoy yourselves the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.